and welcome to the 39th episode. We are going to continue on our imbuing approach. Through our research and work in the areas of happiness and success for the last couple of decades, we came up with this approach of the tiny happy and big happy. Imagine them to be two gears which dovetail into each other and feed off of each other. The tiny happy are the sensory happy moments which are which has a 48 to 72 hour cycle and the big happy is the non-sensory in nature and runs a 3 to 5 year cycle. Now from a neuroscience perspective both tiny happy and big happy light up the same regions in the brain. So that's why they work off of each other. Today we will cover only the tiny happy approach. The first thing to do is to list 10 tiny happy moments in the previous 48 to 72 hours. Some examples, I had an ice cream and I am happy, I had dinner with my friends and I am happy, I took a bath and I am happy, I spent time with my daughter and I am happy. The next step is to rate these happy moments. For that we came up with a very simple approach. I had an ice cream, there is a finance, small financial cost, there is a time and effort cost small again to drive to the store and buy the ice cream and there is a dependency. Ice cream should be available and the store should be open. So and then you calculate the maximum cost for the drove. I had dinner with my friends. So there is a financial cost. There is a time and effort cost and there is a dependency on my friends. So there is a cost of 5. I took bath which is something that I do anyway. So if I can make that happy it is a zero cost or zero cost happy moment. I spent time with my daughter. There is no financial cost but there is a little bit of time and effort cost and there is a dependency cost she should be available. Like that you calculate the maximum cost for the 10 happy moments and then calculate the average of the 10 happy moments that will be the tiny happy score. For the dependency cost alone there is a small thumb rule. For family score between 1 through 4, for friends, extended family and colleagues 5 through 7. And for strangers 8 and above. So let's say I helped a man on the street and because of that I became happy. I would score 8 or more in that. Now the first time I did this I got a score of a little bit over 6. Which tells me that I was not able to enjoy the small pleasures in life. So I had to fine tune my approach. The first thing is the sunk cost phenomenon. I explained about my taking bath. And one of our mentees said... I ate breakfast and I became happy. So we eat three meals a day, few cups of coffee or tea, brush our teeth. We can convert all of those into happy moments. The zero cost moments are also interesting. I open the window, look out, there is a tree with beautiful flowers and I am happy. I look at the sunrise, I am happy. I look at the sunset and I am happy. I look at the mountains in the horizon, I am happy. So I can accumulate these low cost moments more and more in my day to day life. Now let's say the breakfast I ate was not nice. But I can still be grateful to the person who made that breakfast. Thereby imbuing that not so happy moment with happiness. We covered the gratitude and negative visualization techniques in the previous two episodes. There is a third strategy that Kumaran developed which we call tiny shift. This is to look at the same event with a tiny shift in perspective to make it happy. With all these strategies my tiny happy score became three below 3 which is what you should also aim for and I am able to accumulate at least 10 such instances every day and I am much more happy these days. With that I thank you all for listening to my coverage of the tiny happy strategy.